Hey, yo, what's up guys, Baby Bear 48 coming at you one more time. Um, today's problem is the maximum width of binary tree problem, 662. Um, look, I'll be completely honest with you, it's not necessarily all that popular. It is a decent problem, it is a decent problem, but the main reason I'm recording it is because I shot the bed in a mock interview just half an hour ago uh, on this question. So, yeah, I just got real angry about that and decided I'll, I'll figure out how to solve it and then I'll record a video for it. Uh, so, yeah, smash the... Like button for a rage fueled a baby bear video. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's let's jump into the problem, which tells us that we're given a binary tree and that we need to write a function to get the maximum width of this tree. The maximum width of the tree is the maximum width among all levels. Uh, so the width at one level is defined as the length between the end nodes, so the leftmost and the rightmost nodes. Um, and it says where the null nodes between the end are also counted, between the beginning and the end. What that means is this. Um, this row's got a, a width of one. This row's got a width of two. This width has a uh, this row has a width of three. It has a width of three because we, we kind of start here. We've got one. Excuse me, width of four. Width of four. One, two. This is a null node, but it still counts. Three, four. All right. Something like this though. The the first node is at five, and the last one is at three. So the maximum width we have is three. And same thing here. We only have a width of one, width of two, or sorry, width of one, width of one width of two, okay? Um, over here, one, two, one. And now this one, it gets a bit more interesting and I'm, I'm walking through all these examples so you can you can see the different different types here. I think they did a, a good job of giving a range of examples here. This uh, row, this top one only has a width of one, but each of these has exactly a, um, sorry, has, has increasing width. So this one's got a width of two, this one's got a width of four, this one's got a width of eight because there are there are kind of technically six null nodes in here, ones that would have um, been there, but the you know the distance between six and seven is eight. And we'll figure out how we actually define this distance, uh, if you will. But we do need to count all of these null nodes in between. So, how the hell do we actually do this? Well, let's think about it. Um, I think first things first. Look like right off the bat, if we're if we're looking at at levels and trying to find their width, uh, it sh like this problem should be screaming BFS in your brain. So if you're you know, if you're not comfortable with any any BFS, um, maybe I'd urge you to pause the video, go go study it up briefly, and then and then come on back. But again, I, I think kind of by default, it's safe to assume here that like this question just screams for BFS. The second question then becomes is how the hell do I define this width over here, right? Um, especially when. So here's something you could do. This is kind of what, what I was thinking of doing. What what I thought to do was to say, look, let me as I'm going through my BFS. Maybe let me append even the null nodes. If I, I'm, I'm popping off the two, so we're gonna do this in a queue manner. Um, what if I, I built the queue, so every level is built and I actually included the null nodes here. And I would do a walkthrough of every level and find the first occurrence of a non-null number and the last one and, and find whatever the count was between them. So if this is the length, this here's four, then I would almost consider this like index zero, index three, and then three minus zero plus one would give me four and, and that's how you find this length. The issue is if you try to walk through that example, the way I tried to kind of stubbornly do it is you would end up having to append null nodes for, for these other missing parent null nodes and you, you'd get yourself in an infinite loop um, very quickly. So if, if that didn't really make too much sense, honestly, don't even worry because that approach wouldn't really help us. Um, I, just, I wanted to kind of give you a really brief overview of where, where I messed this up and where I struggled with this so you don't do the same thing as I did. The couple things that we do need to take into account to actually to make sense of this question. One is we need to recognize that each of these trees can be kind of serialized um, and they can have a, almost an array interpretation. And, and what I mean by that is this one would, would be something along the lines of one, three, two, five, three, null, and, and nine. What we need to recognize is the relationship of the indices in this array. So as much as this is kind of a, or it is a tree problem, I'd argue this is in some ways like related to an array problem as well. For the reason that I need to recognize the following fact. If I've got a parent at a certain index, I'll call that index i. This is index i. My left child is going to be at two times i, and my right child is going to be at two times i plus one. For the reason that these are, are binary binary trees and so I'm, I'm not going to walk through the mathematical proof of why that works but the math does check out. If this is my root, my left child, and this is zero, i is zero, my left child will be at two times zero plus one. Right here, two i, uh, excuse me, it'll, my left child will be at two i, 
my right child will be at 2i plus 1. So 2 times 0 plus 1 um, will be i. And so, wait, did I, did I mess that up already? Clearly, I didn't, I didn't learn this too well. Um, excuse me. What I mean to do here, I believe I meant to say 2i plus 1 and, and 2i plus 2, okay? If I then check 3, for instance, let, let me just make sure this, this does check out. Uh, this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. Um, 2 times 1 is 2. So, for example, 3 children are, are 5 and 3. Um, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, so index 3 is right here. Yes, 2 times 1 is, is 2 plus 2 would be 4, and so that falls at index 4. So my apologies, guys. Um, and, and this, so this this holds, by the way, for all binary trees. This is a, a, a generic rule. It's not one that I that I came up with. Um, and so this is what we need to recognize is going on here. The reason I say this is important is because what we need to do is to say, when we're doing our level order traversal, I'm not only going to be interested in traversing it with the with the node, but I'm going to, to also want to be interested in what, what index it's represented at, if you will. And index we're going to define again as the, the root the root node here is going to begin with an index of zero. Its left child will be two times index plus one. Its right child will be two times index plus two. If I keep this pattern going for every node that I put on, uh, that I append to my queue, excuse me, once I pop that node off to compare, and I'm, I'm saying, okay, I've got, I've got this node now here that I'm looking at. Um, if it's got a left child, I'm going to append that left child. And that left child will be, um, excuse me, it's, its root will be two times the index of the parent plus one. If it has a right one, we're gonna append that as well with some sort of label as well on it to indicate that its index will be two times the parent index plus two. When we do this for every level at a time, essentially before I, before I begin clearing out my level, so again, we'll, we'll walk through how we're gonna do the, the level order traversal, but again, it, it'll be a typical walkthrough where we, we fill up the queue and then we start popping off and, and appending the children onto the end. Um, I'm, I'm going to look at this at this queue and say, take the first entry that I have, so the leftmost item and the rightmost one, and compare their indices. Whatever those indices are, I'm going to take end minus start plus one to give me the distance. Namely, what is this actually going to look like if I if I was to walk through through this um, array? So maybe I'll, I'll do a dry walk through here with the uh, with the with the queue structure. Okay. So when we begin our, our level order traversal, all we're going to have is this item over here. So what I'm going to add to my queue will be the following. I'm going to add to it the root one, and its index is going to be zero. Okay, so this is going to be the format I'm going to keep is is root dot value and an index. Okay. Now, how do we do our level order traversals? We pop them off. So I'm going to pop this off, and then I'm going to append the two children. Now, if it has a left child, which it does, I will append that left child, which I'm, I'm denoting with three here, and its index will be two times i, which was this plus one. So one. If it has a right child, which it does, I'm going to append it right here. So I'm going to append the two, and its index is going to be two, two times zero plus two, right? So maybe I'll, I'll write this back out. Two i plus one, two i plus two, all right? This is my second order. Now that I'm checking, I can check what the width is of, of, of this, well, of this um, level. The way I check it is I'm going to start with the beginning of my queue. That's right here. I'm going to take this number at the beginning of the queue. I'm going to compare it to this number at the end of the queue. This number is 2. This number is 1. Since these represent indices, the total count of numbers we, we have here, or items, will be 2. 2 minus 1 plus 1, right? So we have end minus start plus 1. And that's going to be our max width every time. So our, our max width, or rather, we're going to compare it to, like, to the max of the max width. And, and n minus start plus 1. This will yield a result of 2. So, so far, the best we've seen is 2. Now I'm going to pop these off one at a time and start putting on their children. We're going to append the 5. The 5 is going to have an index of 2 times 1 plus 1, which will be 3. And we'll have this child 3, and its index will be 4 by the same math. 2, does it have a left child? It doesn't, so we're not going to do it. We're not going to append anything. Does it have a right child? Yes, it does. So at this point, I've popped this off. Its right child is 9. And what's the index going to be? It's going to be the index of this parent right here, which is 2 times 2 plus 2, which is 6. I have this Q now. Okay, I have this entire Q. I apply my formula to find the max width by comparing what's my starting index, my leftmost index. What is my rightmost index? 
my left and right most indices are 3 and 6 respectively. So 6 minus 3 gives me 3 plus 1 is a width of 4. That's how we get a width of, of 4 here. And that's how we're gonna, that's the logic behind how we're gonna do the Brett search. The implementation won't be anything fancy. We're not we're not really gonna be doing anything crazy. It'll be a standard or level order traversal. So this part is really the the key to understanding how we're gonna go through it. At this point, I think I, I hope the logic is clear. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. Um, if you like this so far, thumbs up again for another rage fueled video. Uh, double thumbs up for that. And yeah, let's let's jump into the code. So what we're gonna do is we're, wanna, we're gonna wanna create a, a queue that's gonna, well, that, that we're gonna be doing our, our traversal through. So uh, we're gonna have one node at least here, so that's why I'm not too concerned with the with the error checking. So we'll just say queue is equal to deck. Uh, to the queue, we're going to append the following. We're gonna append the root, and we're also going to append the index. And in that index, we're gonna kind of rely as being zero for the root. I'm also gonna define a max width. Um, the max width will technically be I guess one by default, since if we only have a root, then, well, it'll, it'll always be one, we can never have zero. Um, now, we're gonna jump into our BFS here, uh, while Q will have some logic, and then we're gonna return the max width once all is said and done. So what is this going to actually look like? Well, I can say the following. I can say that my left index is going to be uh, my Q at zero, so my, my, the first element in my Q and I'm, I'm going to be looking at its second item in that because it's an array. I'm going to be looking at the second item. My right index is going to be equal to my Q's final item, which I can index with negative one like I would an array. And I'm going to look at the second item right there. The max width, therefore, like we said, is going to be equal to the maximum between whatever the max width was before, because we might end up having you know, smaller and then, and then wider levels, uh, versus uh, right index minus left index plus one. And maybe, maybe I'll call these start and, and end. Um, so we'll say n minus start plus one. So and now that we've filled it up, so imagine you know we've we filled uh, right here just this this first um, this first entry here. We've only added the first root node, even if by default we'll produce some sort of max width. Now uh, what we want to do is start popping these items off of the queue and then appending their children uh, respectively, like we talked about. So this, again, standard BFS. Uh, I'm going to say for what are we looking for? Sorry, uh, for blank in, in the range of the length of the queue. So we want to go through exactly as many loops as there are items in the queue. I'm going to say cur is equal to uh, q dot, I don't, I don't think I've spelled that right one time. Pop lock, meaning I want to pop from the front of the queue every time. Then I'm going to say if cur dot left, we're going to append stuff. If cur dot right, we're going to append more stuff. All right, and that's it. What is it that we're going to be appending? Well, we're going to append um, the following, we're going to append cur.left, the actual node itself, and then the the index. And so maybe maybe I got to do this. Q.popLeft is going to give me this. Uh, it'll give me uh, an array like this where we've got a, what do you call it? We, we've, got a, we've got a node and we've got an index. So once we pop it off, I'm going to be given a, a, a node and an index. All I'm essentially doing here, since this is an array or a list, I'm destructuring. It's saying for each of these values, uh, assign it to a different variable. So this is going to be a, a, a tree node. This is going to be an index or just a regular integer. Um, so, and, and we said we have two times index um, plus one, right? Otherwise, I'm gonna say q.append, cur.write, and two times index plus two, okay? That's gonna be the index of that, of that next upcoming number. Um, and that should be it. We go through the next iteration up top we're, we're then going to find this. We'll find that the maximum width is, is 2 instead of 1. And then we go through here, we'll find that it's 4 instead of 2. After we've popped through all these, in, in kind of that last where we've popped everything off, we don't have, you know, we're, we've, we're popping all these off the off the queue, all of these. None of them have any children. The queue won't have any items. We'll break out of this while loop and we're going to return this max width. Let me give this a quick run. Uh, make sure that that works and it looks like I... What is happening here? Okay, so it looks like, I'm sorry. Um, oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna copy this. I, just, I gotta refresh my page because it's all, the formatting's all wonky. This happens sometimes and I'm not sure why why that is, but let's hope that it, the code stays as it is. It should all be fine though. So I, I don't know what the hell to do here, guys. Am I, cause I'm zoomed in like an absolute fool. Oh Lord, it's been a rough day. So what did I do here? Nothing. 
didn't do nothing. We're all good. 95% speed. That's what we like to see. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know what you guys thought of the video. Questions, comments, feedbacks down below. Uh, again, just as a quick recap, we did a standard BFS. The only thing that we had to take into account when we were doing this BFS was to keep track of what index each of these each of these roots were at. The way we defined the index was by saying the root is going to be zero, as if we'd um, we'd had a representation of this tree within an array, and then we acknowledge the fact that your left child is always at index two i plus one, and your right child is always at index two i plus two. Once we append those as we go through and then pop them off, the only real calculation we did was was right here, and I, I'd argue this is a pretty trivial calculation to find the width that exists at any given point. So, like I already said, questions, comments, concerns, drop them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.